So I thought uh, we will uh, make a short video in uh, in respect to mixing and doing some of the bad things here. I thought it'd be kind of fun to uh, see if we can make a video. I've made several videos and suggestions on on what to do, and and we're going to talk a little bit about <laughs> what not to do today. And in case you do the not to do part, and then how to possibly try to get rid of them and rectify the problems. So, as you can see, I am not an owner of anything fancy. I don't have a particular super shop here. This is what you're looking at. Um, there's there's nothing, no, no smoke and mirrors, no nothing here. So, uh, anyway, we're going to jump into that. We're not going to create a point or create any uh, particular um, piece today. We're just going to goof around a little bit, and we're going to make some epoxy. We're going to use the HTE just because it's a little bit oh more difficult to to mix and match uh, than some of the thinner viscous uh, epoxy. So this is a one to four ratio. So we'll just uh, over kicks. Uh, we'll put in. You can see how deep it pours. We'll put in about. Uh, we'll just put in twelve grams of that here. I always like when I mix epoxies to, as you can see here, a lot of dripple stuff sitting around here. So what I like to do is uh, clean this off. Keep your your bottle nice and clean to minimize the congregation and collection of the. Uh, um, Epoxies on there as well. So yep, you can see first thing here that uh, <laughs> Really was not my intention, but you can see that uh, it went to 13 grams rather than 12 Well, gee, what do I do now? Well, don't worry. You're within a gram. You're gonna be fine So we're gonna still pretend it's 13 excuse me 12 and a fourth of 12 is 3 Oh went back down to 12 lovely well, here's some real life differences that uh, you might think, oh, well, what are we going to do? So anyway, 12, we're going to make a total of 15. Uh, adding 3 grams would be one-fourth of the volume by weight that is in there by now, rather. So we're going to go to 15. Now, how you do this is really your ticket. However you like is... 13, 14, and 15. So we have arrived now at a mix and it's toggling between 15 and 16. That is really okay. I want to stick the stick down in there and then clean with the other side of the rag so we now have the least amount on here. So now here you see, if I can get the camera to film, there you go, some gooey very thick syrup. So I'm going to pretend I'm a moron. Well, some in my family would agree on that that is the case. So I'm just going to kind of sit here and say I'm going to do all the things you were taught not to do. So I'm just going to stir this thing up here like I was stirring up some latex paint for the house instead. And you can already see now after a few seconds uh, quite a bit of bubbles in there already. So I'm just going to continue to do that, making all the Bubbles, I am a impatient kind of person. I'm insinuating I'm really am not, but uh, anyway, I'm going to pretend that this is my first go at epoxy. I come from uh, polyesters, which really makes this a whole lot easier. Uh, so I'm just going to do all the things. Of course, when you were doing this, there are pl plenty of videos out there that shows you how to mix epoxies and whatnot. Um, I'm going to do two things in here that is kind of uh, regarded as a no-no. One is I'm going to whip this thing here like I'm making whipped cream. Thus, as you can see, throwing in lots and lots of bubbles. It's almost like all bubbles. Uh, and then what I'm also going to do is... Um, let's see, yeah, there's plenty of bubbles in here. And I'm aerating it, kind of doing everything bad. And I'm also not going to use two canisters. 
most people will agree on when you mix epoxies that you need to use you mix it in here and then you transfer everything to a secondary container and there's nothing wrong in that there is something wrong in stirring it this fast this thick because as you can see eh, if my camera can focus on it there you go it really is a nasty mess that'll turn into well I'll tell you what it'll turn into this piece here was created a few days ago I had no visible bubbles in the matrix at all and once it baked there was no visible bubbles but uh, I had not did or not done what I showed in the video yesterday regarding the degassing part uh, and, and now I have a shield that in the front is fine well there's still some release agent on there making it look not fine but it really is alright and as we move towards the center uh, that is where all the bubbles had collected that's what happened in the mold and that's my phone so pardon that for a second while I turn that off in the mold it has all congregated in here with the bubbles that I could not see when you fired in the oven it turns out looked like this so as you saw the other day when I made the other video this with all these bubbles is really not acceptable so also what I was talking about is I don't transfer it to another container I was a little I mean I didn't start out like that but I don't want to throw stuff away I don't have to so when I stir epoxy I am very careful that I get everything on the bottom in one motion one side and again there is no right no wrong I'm just merely saying this is what worked for me and then I go counterclockwise then back clockwise and whatnot and I turn it around and I have over the years of since I switched to epoxy from polymers I have yet that's me knocking on wood I have yet have a bad batch that only partially set up because I did not provide um, a good enough what should we say environment to transfer some of the non mixed epoxies that supposedly hides around out here uh, into the second canister so there's nothing wrong again I'm not trying to tell you don't do it like that I'm just saying this is what has worked for me and I don't have to throw twice as many cups away uh, so that's it you can see if I can get it to focus that there really is a mess of bubbles in there so if you would use this in the oven this thing would boil like boiled milk and it would obviously render an unusable piece you can imagine that if on this piece here these were invisible bubbles you can just imagine what this would turn out to so since we've now established that I'm gonna then if you are mixing for the first time you will then see that there is nothing you can do about this unless you have a way to mechanically degas it so I'm gonna do something first here. I'm gonna show you how it looks if I set this in the degasser or my chamber over here and just try to degas it with a thick viscosity like this uh, you will regret you ever tried so I'm not gonna go through with it I'm merely just gonna pretend I'm gonna take this out that I'm gonna try it because and then we're gonna talk about what happens turn it on we had 10 grain or 10 inches 15 and here it comes thick liquid that will be uncontrollable as it reaches the top 
so I'm not going to let it. And we're going to stop it right here. That's when it's... So that didn't work. You can continue to do that for hours and you will not accomplish anything. Then you can see that all the bubbles are drawn out to the surface and the only thing you can do to this right now is to thin it and then degas it. It's really about all you can do. Thinning or making it more viscous you can then get the bubbles out. There's a couple of ways you can do this. The best way that I prefer is simply to set it under the heat lamp for a few minutes and then degas it. If that is still not enough it is perfectly acceptable to give it a squirt or two of acetone in there. However this is still so thick right now that there's no way that we can degas it. It'll take an hour of on and off and on and off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it under the heat lamp for 10 minutes and see what happens and we'll come back to that in just a second. So here we are after about oh six seven minutes you can see that it's quite a bit different now still a bunch of uh, bubbles in there but by far it's better and I think if we just mix it a little bit uh, One eighteen. So let's take that and put that in and look at the difference how it behaves. and you can see that instead of rising rapidly the bubbles are starting to pop. Now it'll still rise and we'd have to step do it. Here it comes and that is what you got to be careful but you can see it now never makes it to the top and that's the difference between high and low viscosity epoxies or polymers that you're trying to degas. Now take a look at the bubbles that are up on the side. You can see it just takes a while for them to pop. And that is just because you are at a epoxy system. If I would use the Max CLR or the HP they would uh, pop a whole lot quicker. So what we're going to try to do, as you can see, we still have uh, 26 inches of mercury here. Uh, this will just sit here. We're going to try to see if we could speed things up a little bit by giving it a squirt of uh, acetone. So stand by. Here we are ready to degas. Get it in focus. And you can see a whole lot better. But not where it needs to be. So what I'll do is just set this down here really quick and then three squirts of acetone, restart the vacuum pump, now watch, kind of fun, notice first the uh, fog is more intense in there and you can see it bubbling kind of explosively popping splattering up on the screen everywhere and almost instantaneously took everything out very little on the side a little bit but not much and with the pots down there you can see is behaving differently they don't really turn into bubbles. They turn into, uh, I don't know what to call them. There you go, poop, one goes, the shooting off. So when you use acetone, expect a more of a violent explosion. I don't want to use the word explosion really, but you can see the bubbles here. 
is, is, is not as friendly and controlled. It's shooting out everywhere and my whole front plexiglass here is now covered in, uh, in shooting stars if you wish. So, but it is a way to do it. But also what has happened now is the epoxy has cooled down with the addition of the acetone and is now needing to go back under the heat. So you have to, um, to kind of weigh everything what you're trying to do here. So we'll uh, let the air out, heat it up again and see what we come up with. And here we are finally after it had it reheated again. You can now see that whatever little bubble in there will pop very efficiently. And it will just sit there and bubble like this. Even on the sides you can see there's very little. So in my opinion, and this is just it, I have better success and better end results with a short heat cure for about 8 to 10 minutes, and this is all variable, uh, before that I degas it. And then after degassing, another 5 or so minutes heat cure, which is not really a cure, it's just a viscosity issue where you thin it with heat so that the surface tension is low enough that the bubbles pop with ease and you don't get a boiling waterfall. So now you can see this epoxy here uh, is, is about ready. There are still some bubbles on the side you can see, but they will sit here and pop like this forever. Literally will all day. So I'm going to go ahead and set this in. Turn off the pump. Evacuate the chamber. And then you will see a beautiful, clear, degassed. Now I'm going to put a cold stick in there, so we'll expect some changes. But you can see what we started with, you saw that, and how difficult that is to degas. However, as you can see now, this is ready to go. The only bubble in there, <laughs> I just stirred it in with a stick. So that said, mess with it, don't be afraid to try stuff, just experience this epoxy here is now going to just uh, hardened. I'm not going to use it for anything. And just three sticks and you can see there's already bubbles back in there. So that's it. Signing off. We'll have a good epoxy time. Okay and so here in the end just as we focused on what not to do. I think I'd like to show what to do. So here we just mixed a quick batch and you can see the temperatures are in the mid 80, 85 which is pretty desirable. Uh, this being max GRE is a little bit different than the other type that we've seen. But you can see there's always a little bit of uh, bubbles after the pouring. The thing that I like to recommend when you stir and, and the, the easiest part is probably for me just to say, look at this. This is about as fast as I like to go. Uh, if you like to go faster than that, you just be prepared that the more you cavitate that brush or stick in this case in, uh, in this uh, liquid, the more bubbles are you going to draw in there. Then you go backwards and forwards. Now it's kind of silly to the... To the uh, I guess for some people to sit there and watch, what are we watching this dude uh, stirring the pot and with epoxy and whatnot? But a couple of things. Um, while there are thousands of different techniques on how to mix epoxy, not all of them 
are necessarily bad or good. Um, just about, you can see that there's a little bit more bubbles stirred up now. They will pop rather quick though. So that said, and so you can see here, this is about almost mixed, but you will see that there now are a bit more bubbles uh, already in there. As you start going towards the latter part uh, is when I prefer scrape all the stuff on the side. Try not to lift the pin out of the water, or <laughs> epoxy rather, and then turn the cup in your hand. It's just what works for me. The big important thing here is don't go fast. Don't start any of that. Nice and slowly. And make sure you touch the bottom. Try to minimize the lifting of the stick out of the polymers as much as you can. You can see what I just created here by just going a little bit faster. It's already there. So minimizing of, of these bubbles is, is really what is desired. Uh, in trying to get this up. Another thing too is you can see, uh, it might be hard for you in the camera, but there's several different stages of polymerization when you mix these things. Um, the first sign that you have when you mix the two materials together is you're going to start to see like small transparent traces swirls through the um, uh, liquid and that is as you draw the two different uh, polymers together and as that happens more and more all of a sudden you will see that it looks clear rather than this little streaky liquid in there that is the first stage of the polymerization you have now mixed and that is a good indicator that you have mixed everything equally together look on the side kind of tilt the glass get a light shining down there if you still see streaks and I mean any kind of swirl streak in there it is not mixed enough and especially when you have cups that has indentations you need to get in there and dig that out that said that's how I would mix the epoxy it shouldn't take but two or three minutes and uh, while I have mixed this here I think we had dropped to 70s or something and that's the stick that's 83 we don't want to shoot the stick eighty seventy eight so it does cool down a little bit and then you just use the heat lamp again that's it that's how I would mix it now you can see there are bubbles in there if I can get this camera to focus on it which it does not seem to want to do so anyway there are bubbles in there and you just have to uh, degas them with either heat or the chamber.